which we will carry out all the research that we consider necessary to, with Heinrich Hummer, who made, from 1918, agronomy studies, and so they have a common passion. Ooh, to receive more and more convoys. The red brick buildings of the old barracks are no longer enough. A camp, Bus only discovers a small town of 15,000 inhabitants, as well as a former barracks of the Polish army, where he establishes the first place of confinement, Auschwitz I. And he also spots a villa next to the camp. Bus take over this house, whose Polish owners are expropriated. <laughs> On the second floor, from his office window, this bird's eye view of the crematorium. Don't bother him. Oh. The commander settles in the villa with his wife Edwidge and their five children. The family thinks only of his social ascent. These photos from the family album attest to this. Their new living environment provides unexpected comfort. 70 m from the crematorium, the garden, surrounded by a large wall, becomes children's favorite playground. It was so big they could ride bikes inside. Today, it seems that at that time, my grandparents went from being anonymous to being VIPs. Thanks to the concentration camps, the Oos lead a comfortable life, with a workforce reduced to slavery. There is an inmate who serves as a gardener, inmates who serve as servants inside the house, who took care of the children if necessary. There is everything to benefit in any case from a gentrification in Schweiz. My grandfather wrote in his memoirs, it was heaven. Like all SS leaders, Boos is constantly motivated by Himmler, whose arguments have been recorded only once, for internal use. Most of you know what 100 corpses is. 500 or 1,000 corpses have stood in these circumstances and remained worthy, apart from a few cases of human failure. It has toughened us up. It's a page of glory in our history that has never been written and never will be again. As early as 1941, Himmler ordered Us, let Auschwitz go on an industrial scale to receive more and more convoys. The red brick buildings of the old barracks are no longer enough. Three kilometers from this first site, then began the construction of Birkenau, a gigantic concentration camp, but also a killing center, where upon their arrival, the deportees are sent directly to the gas chambers. Us also uses prisoners to supply labor for an entire industrial complex. A large chemical plant is set up at the cutting edge of technology at the time. In particular, it manufactures rubber for tires. The set at Auschwitz, that is, the camps, the city, the factories, is a permanent and incessant construction site from 40 to almost 1945, the end of the war. Auschwitz continues to diversify. After this huge factory, Boos develops a large agricultural project with Himmler. He shares that with Heinrich Himmler, who made, from 1918, agronomy studies, and so they have a common passion. Boos oversee the installation of these greenhouses to research new plants. From 1943, the Birkenau camp became immense. The new agricultural center is established in a small hamlet, Rajsko. During the war, Auschwitz becomes a model city for the Nazis. The population is multiplied by four. Within the camp, alongside Rudolf, Us, another great Nazi criminal, also take advantage of the convoys arriving at Auschwitz, son of rich industrialists, Dr. Joseph Mengel conducts medical experiments. Mengel conducts official research there, in an official setting. The concentration camp is run in a way, like at the butchers. In camp medical services and medical academies, the Nazi doctors carry out atrocious mutilations, in particular on the bodies of Jewish and Gypsy deportees. Doctors who have been given full power over individuals who are no longer relegated to the rank of human beings, but to the rank of human material, from which we will carry out all the research that we consider necessary to advance medicine in this or that department. 
the experiments of Dr. Mengel. They require children. In this column of little survivors, filmed here in 1945, in the front row, two little twin sisters hold hands. Hungarian jury, her name is Miriam and Eva, 11 years old at the time. But then when we got rich, it was the cheese. Between the ages of two and sixteen, we started to We had no rights. We had a fierce determination to live one more day. When she landed on the quay of Auschwitz Birkenau in 1944 with the five members of his family, Eva must, as soon as she gets off the train, to undergo the selection operated by the SS, who received the convoys and work for Mendel. Nazis want young German twins, twins, and he noticed Miriam and me, we were dressed alike, we looked alike. And he demanded to know from my mother if we were twins. And my mother asked, is that good? And the Nazi nodded yes. At that moment, another Nazi came, pulled my mother in one direction. We were pulled in the opposite direction. We were crying, she was crying. Stripped of their belongings, four members of his family are sent to the gas chamber. If Eva and her sister survive, this is to be used by Dr. Mendel's experiments. Each day, they are taken to the medical service of the camp they run. Take a lot of blood from my left eye and give me a minimum of five injections into my right The content of those injections is given now then, and unfortunately, I still do not want to go. These injections make Eva seriously ill and causes a very high fever. Next morning, the doctor will tell me, score as a doctor, will never ever examine me, I believe. Mm -hmm. Then he will not be satisfied with the Cuban, to show you how to do it. Because Mandel experiments on twins, acts of torture, plays a strategic role for the Nazis. At the very heart of Nazi ideology, there's this idea that Aryan blood is rare and everything must be done to promote reproduction and allow the growth of the army and population. And so, we must try to find a method which allows the birth of twins to pass. The older twins, the very reproductive age, to mate female and male twins to see if the female got pregnant, she would have twins. So these are very important in increasing the Aryan race. Eva and her sister survive, permanently affected by a serious physical deficiency. 1,100,000 people perish in Auschwitz. But from the end of 1941, Hitler and his accomplices experienced their first setbacks. Goering considers that waging war, at the same time in the West and East of Europe, is madness. But again, he is not confronting Hitler. Goering, at first, was very skeptical of an eastward offensive. And there, he realizes very quickly that, apparently, Hitler has made his decision. And that is the rule for Goering. If he has made a decision, it is up to him to obey orders. But Goering was right. <laughs> against the USSR. The German army had not taken the measure of the freezing winter. The troops are running out. In front of Stalingrad, the losses are enormous. At that time, the young Dieter moved from the Hitler Youth to the Russian front, where he fights in the Hermann Goering division. The young soldier is only 17 years old. What I learned from the adults who were there, it is that Goring had a different opinion from Hitler. He didn't want war. And in a conversation with Hitler, Goring said, We don't want to play a game of chance. Hitler replied, I've always only played games of chance. Engaged in multiple battles, the Germans lacked the necessary armament.
but Hitler does not want to hear anything. He searches in his close guard, an accomplice capable of promising him a miracle. Goering, who once led the arms industry, apply as a candidate. Hitler, on the other hand, prefers a more motivated collaborator. He chooses his architect, Albert Speer. Hitler, to Speer gesagt. Hitler said to him, you must become minister of armaments. Speer said he had no training in this area. Hitler insisted, saying, you will do it. So he accepted this mission. Without Speer, the war wouldn't have lasted that long. The Reich Minister for Armaments and War Production, visiting a large arms company, he replaced the workers for the investments in the incredible increase in production. Hitler asked him to double production rates. But from the start, for Speer, the problem seems complicated. The men are sent to the front, women have replaced them in the arms factories. Propaganda even encouraged them to quit their previous job. This worker was until recently a seamstress in a fashion salon. This one, saleswoman in a jewelry store. This one, a saleswoman in a perfumery. But it's still not enough to achieve the exorbitant goals dictated by Hitler. In addition, Speer is responsible for overseeing the development of secret weapons, who must reverse the course of the war. In particular, the V-1 and V-2 missiles, which have been tested for more than five years. The first ballistic missiles in history would be able to hit England. Against all odds, Speer pulled off the miracle. While the country suffered bombardments during the year 1943, like here in Hamburg, he manages to double the production of the armament. The guns and the tanks are assembled on the chain, in huge factories, where the workers work more than 70 hours per week. But his miracle also has a hidden side. Due to Allied bombings, town centers were destroyed, and some industrial sites as well. That's when the idea came up to install production underground. In central Germany, in a region of forests 150 kilometers from Hanover, a sprawling project is going to be buried under this hill. The Nazis imagine a network of galleries of more than 12 kilometers who cross from side to side all the mountain of Middle Badora. You enter through this vast entrance, seven meters high. The old mine looks like an endless succession of tunnels. This maze has 45 bays. It is the largest underground factory in the world, where workers assemble the famous V-2 missiles. But it is also the heart of the system organized by Albert Speer. Thousands of deportees from concentration camps, they are locked up there night and day, to work like slaves. Of the 60,000 prisoners in the tunnel, 20,000 will die there, including more than 2,000 French. Albert Speer will always say to know nothing of these barbaric living conditions who make his miracle possible. Hitler considered him an organizational genius. He decorates it. Speer's ambition irritates his rivals. Speer succeeded in instrumentalizing the camp system for the arms industry. We know that apart from Hitler, Himmler particularly feared a rival. It was Speer, because he always managed to win over Hitler. Because it considered him an organizational genius. He decorates it. Speer's ambition irritates his rivals. Speer succeeded in instrumentalizing the camp system for the arms industry. We know that apart from Hitler, Himmler particularly feared a rival. It was Speer. Because he always managed to win over Hitler. Speer 
Speer's miracle is not enough. The news coming from the Russian front are more and more catastrophic for the Germans. 200,000 soldiers are taken prisoner. Goering now physically bears the brunt of defeat. His drug use is skyrocketing. Puffy, glassy-eyed, he weighs more than 120 kilograms. He feels useless. It's a personal crisis. And this crisis, he tries to calm down by taking medicine, morphine or something. It is at this moment that we make fun of him more and more. And it is also, not only the German public, but it is also Hitler who becomes more and more critical. Yet on the Eastern Front, when Marshal Goering inspects the Panzer Division, named after him, all soldiers must still pretend to believe in victory. Among the fighters of this unit is the young Dieter. We knew between us that the war was lost, but we could just think it, we couldn't say it openly. If someone said, the war is lost and all is over, he would have been shot. To curb this demotivation, Hitler needs a collaborator, capable of enlisting the Germans behind him. It's time for the most fanatical of his accomplices to come back into the light. Berlin Sports Palace, February 18, 1943, Goebbels orchestrates a communication operation. He gathered a crowd of convinced Nazis but also wounded returning from the front. He carefully chose his 14,000 spectators. The English claim that the German people oppose our government's total war measures. The people would not want total war according to the English, but surrender. I ask you, do you want total war? It creates a climate of hysteria in Germany. Do you want this war so total and so radical than we can imagine? I ask you, are you determined to follow the Fuhrer to hell in order to achieve victory? by accepting even the harshest personal trials. That evening, Goebbels, in a trance, will accomplish what he considers as the most successful performance of his career. Germany must sacrifice herself to the last. Germany will never capitulate. Goebbels is smart enough to realize that the situation is difficult, can be desperate. If victory is possible, it will be thanks to the energy, to the will and the sense of sacrifice. If defeat is inevitable, well the Nazis will disappear. With such a din, such a crash, such an apocalypse, that at least they will be immortalized by their sacrifice. His eternal rival, Goering, is finally disgraced. He comes back to the fore. Goebbels then deploys an extraordinary energy. He visits the victims of the bombed cities. Listen to complaints. Awards medals. And runs the soup kitchens. He will return fully to the fore like a kind of vice Hitler, like a second Hitler, for the benefit of disaster. Goebbels also extends the age of mobilization for all Germans. Men are now enrolled until age 60. And the age of the youngest is lowered to only 16 years. As the Allies approach, I decided to commit. New recruits go to the front in their everyday clothes with the weapons they have at hand. 
Prevails named the operation. People storm. But in Berlin in ruins, where the inhabitants are reduced to eat, digging through the trash. One more piece of news will shake the morale of the Albert Speer will always say to know nothing of these barbaric living conditions who make his miracle possible. Hitler considered him an organizational genius. He decorates it. Speer's ambition irritates his rivals. Speer succeeded in instrumentalizing the camp system for the arms industry. We know that apart from Hitler, Himmler particularly feared a rival. It was Speer, because he always managed to win over Hitler. Speer's miracle is not enough. The news coming from the Russian front are more and more catastrophic for the Germans. 200,000 soldiers are taken prisoner. Goering now physically bears the brunt of defeat. His drug use is skyrocketing. Puffy, glassy-eyed. He weighs more than 120 kilograms. He feels useless. It's a personal crisis. And this crisis, he tries to calm down by taking medicine, morphine or something. It is at this moment that we make fun of him more and more. And it is also, not only the German public, but it is also Hitler who becomes more and more critical. Yet on the Eastern Front, when Marshal Goering inspects the Panzer Division, named after him, all soldiers must still pretend to believe in victory. Among the fighters of this unit is the young Dieter. We knew between us that the war was lost, but we could just think it, we couldn't say it openly. If someone said, the war is lost and all is over, he would have been shot. To curb this demotivation, Hitler needs a collaborator, capable of enlisting the Germans behind him. It's time for the most fanatical of his accomplices to come back into the light. Berlin Sports Palace, February 18, 1943, Rubales orchestrates a communication operation. He gathered a crowd of convinced Nazis but also wounded returning from La morfatlare, jumătatea plină a paharului întâlnește jumătatea plină a vieții. Jumătate vin, jumătate viață. From the front, he carefully chose his 14,000 spectators. The English claim that the German people oppose our government's total war measures. The people would not want total war according to the English, but surrender. I ask you, do you want total war? It creates a climate of hysteria in Germany. Do you want this war so total and so radical than we can imagine? I ask you, are you determined to follow the Fuhrer to hell in order to achieve victory by accepting even the harshest personal trials? That evening, Bales, in a trance, will accomplish what he considers as the most successful performance of his career. Germany must sacrifice herself to the last. Germany will never capitulate. Gubels is the young Dieter. We knew between us that the war was lost, 
but we could just think it, we couldn't say it openly. If so, Goring now physically bears the brunt of defeat. His drug use is skyrocketing. Puffy, glassy-eyed, he weighs more than 120 kilograms. He feels useless. It's a personal crisis. And this crisis, he tries to calm down by taking medicine, morphine or something. It is at this moment that we make fun of him more and more. And it is also not only the German public, but it is also Hitler who becomes more and more critical. Yet on the Eastern Front, when Marshal Goering inspects the Panzer Division, named after him, all soldiers must still pretend to believe in victory. Among the fighters of this unit is the young Dieter. We knew between us that the war was lost, but we could just think it, we couldn't say it openly. If someone said, the war is lost and all is over, he would have been shot. To curb this demotivation, Hitler needs a collaborator, capable of enlisting the Germans behind him. It's time for the most fanatical of his accomplices to come back into the light. Berlin Sports Palace, February 18, 1943, Hubels orchestrates a communication operation. He gathered a crowd of convinced Nazis but also wounded returning from the front. He carefully chose his 14,000 spectators. The English claim that the German people oppose our government's total war measures. The people would not want total war according to the English, but surrender. I ask you, do you want total war? It creates a climate of hysteria in Germany. Do you want this war so total and so radical than we can imagine? I ask you, are you determined to follow the Fuhrer to hell in order to achieve victory by accepting even the harshest personal trials? That evening, Hubels, in a trance, will accomplish what he considers as the most successful performance of his career. Germany must sacrifice herself to the last. Germany will never capitulate. Hubels is smart enough to realize that the situation is difficult, can be desperate. If victory is possible, it will be thanks to the energy, to the will and the sense of sacrifice. If defeat is inevitable, well the Nazis will disappear. With such a din, such a crash, such an apocalypse, that at least they will be immortalized by their sacrifice. His eternal rival, Goring, is finally disgraced. He comes back to the fort. Hubales then deploys an extraordinary energy. He visits the victims of the bombed cities. Listen to complaints. Awards medals. And runs the soup kitchens. He will return fully to the fore, like a kind of vice Hitler, like a second Hitler, for the benefit of disaster. Gabales also extends the age of mobilization for all Germans. Men are now enrolled until age 60. And the age of the youngest is lowered to only 16 years. As the Allies approach, I decided to commit. New recruits go to the front in their everyday clothes with the weapons they have at hand. Gubales named the operation People's Storm. 
But in Berlin in ruins, where the inhabitants are reduced to ease, digging through the trash. One more piece of news will shake the morale of the Nazis. In Normandy, the Allies have just landed. Day by day, the collapse of the Reich is looming. Little Margit lives hidden in Berlin. To flee the Nazis, his father, a Jew, went into exile in China. And from his hiding place in July 1944, the little girl regains hope, hearing a news on the radio. My God! But on July 20th, 1944, it was the attack on Hitler. And you know what I heard first on the radio? It was Hitler's voice saying, Providence saved me. And she had saved him. In this completely devastated room of his headquarters, Hitler miraculously survived a bomb attack. Around him, there were four dead and nine seriously injured, whom he visits in the hospital. The attack was organized by senior officers who wanted to negotiate with the Allies the surrender of Germany as Brexpital. Hitler on Hitler and to flee the Nazis, his father, a Jew, went into exile in China. And from his hiding place in July 1944, the little girl regains hope, hearing a news on the radio. My God! But on July 20th, 1944, it was the attack on Hitler. And you know what I heard first on the radio? It was Hitler's voice saying, Providence saved me. And she had saved him. In this completely devastated room of his headquarters, Hitler miraculously survived a bomb attack. Around him, there were four dead and nine seriously injured, whom he visits in the hospital. The attack was organized by senior officers who wanted to negotiate with the Allies the surrender of Germany. This plot against Hitler triggers thousands of arrests of torture and murder. Speer, Himmler, Goring, Goebbels, know now all that they risk if they betray him. But they will make very different choices. His accomplices are all supposed to follow their Fuhrer, even in the sacrifice of their life. They are now trapped by Hitler, who has lost his lucidity. In March 1945, he was walking in slow motion. On these propaganda images, he sits facing a map and facing paralyzed generals who dare not talk about defeat. He dominates them. He nails their beak. He scolds them. He yells at them. But in the spring of 1945, he moves small flags and pawns that no longer exist. On April 20th, 1945, Hitler's 56th birthday, this is the last time they are filmed together. Goering and Himmler parade around, seemingly all smiles, but that's just an illusion. A few hours later, they hurriedly abandon Hitler. Goering learns that Hitler makes the decision not to leave Berlin. Goering leaves for southern Germany and flees. Because at that time, to stay in Berlin is to die. The Soviet soldiers crush the city under the bombs. In a bunker under the monumental chancellery of the three main accomplices, only Goebbels remains holed up with Hitler. If it leads to suicide, death, defeat, it does not matter. Because Dr. Goebbels, chief propagandist, will have worked on the staging of this death, so that forever and ever, the myth of this death, of this sacrifice, of its disappearance, will resound. As the empire crumbles, Joseph Goebbels, the fanatic, addressed to the Germans, April 21st, one last radio message. The moment of truth is approaching. 
I'm staying in Berlin with my entire cabinet. My wife and children too are here and will stay in Berlin. While the city is in the hands of the Soviets, on April 30th, 1945, at 3 p.m., Hitler commits suicide. According to his last wishes, he designates Joseph Goebbels as his official successor. But Goebbels is only chancellor for a few hours. When the Soviets arrive in the chancellery gardens, they discover the charred bodies of Joseph and Magda Goebbels. With the corpses of their six children that they poisoned before committing suicide, with Magda Goebbels, his wife, they agree that there is no future, there is no possible world without Nazism, so they murder their children. They turn off the next generation, and it's finished. Everywhere in Germany, the Allies discover the same scene. Thousands of anonymous Nazis do not want to surrender and commit suicide as a family. Unlike Goebbels, Himmler and Goering, them are ready to negotiate. Himmler and Goring remain politicians to the end, that is people who leave all options open, who calculate and who want to survive. Hermann Goring takes refuge in his residence on the border of Germany and Austria. Before his death, Hitler fired him. The Fuhrer had designated him as his successor. So on April 23, 1945, Goring had sent him this classified telegram, where he had offered to replace him. If negotiations are necessary, I would be in a better position than you in Berlin. There he asks Hitler, if you are no longer able to make decisions, it is now up to me to take over your duties. Hitler considered this telegram a serious betrayal. And that is why Goering is dismissed from all his functions. Finally, in May 1945, Goering surrendered to the Americans. His wife and daughter are in safe custody. Goering is still convinced that he will be able to negotiate a surrender with honors. He is a marshal, the highest military rank, but he is told that he will be treated like a criminal. He understands from one minute to the next that he has no chance of negotiating anything. Because it's an unconditional surrender that the Allies have been asking for for years. Hitler was also betrayed by his faithful, Heinrich Himmler. The leader of the SS is on the run. Since February 1945, to save his head, Himmler made secret contact with the Allies to negotiate surrender. He even allowed his white Red Cross buses to save more than 13,000 prisoners whom he freed from the camps. Himmler played a double game at the end of the war, when he conducted negotiations behind Hitler's back with the Allies. We notice his disconnection from reality. He truly believed that the Allies were ready to accept it from a position of strength. When he realizes that he is not credible, Himmler hides among ordinary German soldiers taken prisoner. He wants to drown in the mass, disguised under a false identity. He was finally recognized near Hamburg, and when he is searched in his house by an English doctor, Himmler bites into a cyanide capsule, the poison he kept hidden in his mouth. He dies immediately. The killer of the century will never be accountable. He wanted to escape his responsibilities. Not just running away, but also by committing suicide to not appear before a judge. On the same day, in Flensburg, in northern Germany, the last Nazi leaders are arrested. Among them are Hitler's protege Albert Speer, the architect and minister of armaments. In the summer of 1945, among the accomplices of Hitler's close guard, only Goering and Speer are still alive. Down the ladder, Oss also survived. They will answer for their crimes before the judges. They still think they'll make it out alive. Oh, my God.
plasma cât cea mai limpede apă pe care și-au dorit-o oamenii vreodată. Covina apa din ținutul echilibrului. In Nuremberg, on November 20, 1945, the trial of the century begins. These American, English, Russian, and French magistrates must judge the 24 greatest Nazi criminals still alive. All face the death penalty. And for the first time in history, they will have to answer for a new crime, the crime against humanity. Accused number one is Hermann Göring. Slimmed down, cured of his drug addiction, he feels particularly combative. He was in really good shape at the time, and he really took this trial as a fight. From the opening of the trial, Goring wanted to impose himself. According to American procedure, defendants just have to plead guilty or not guilty, but prepared a long tirade for him. Before responding to the court, whether I'm found guilty or not guilty. The president calls him to order. I inform you that the defendants are not authorized to make a declaration. You just have to plead guilty or not guilty. On these charges, I plead not guilty. After him, all defendants will plead not guilty in turn. Not guilty. Not guilty. During the trial, Goring takes center stage. He still thinks of escaping the death penalty by his strategy. He wants to defend Hitler's project for Germany. His idea, it was almost at that time, to justify his Fuhrer. But the judges have planned an electroshock. Nazi criminals must be confronted in full court to the unbearable images filmed at the liberation of the camps. Images shot by Americans and Russians to bear witness forever to the atrocities organized by the accused. During the screening, Goring looks away. He understands that his defense is collapsing. Seeing the images on the screen, he had very little luck to succeed with his idea to explain and justify what happened for 12 years in Germany. The chilling testimony of Rudolf Huss, the commandant of the Auschwitz camp, will still overwhelm the accused. Certainly. The prisoners were treated harshly. But with a certain method. Until the end, they defend the Nazi regime. Um, the chilling testimony of Rudolf Oss, the commandant of the Auschwitz camp, will still overwhelm the accused. Certainly. The prisoners were treated harshly. But with a certain method. Until the end, they defend the Nazi regime. But in Nuremberg, only one will renounce his convictions and claim to know nothing about the Holocaust. It is, however, one of the closest to Hitler, Albert Speer, the architect. Hitler and the collapse of his regime prepare for a terrible time of suffering for the German people. After this trial, I will condemn Hitler as the person responsible for this misfortune. He claims that he always distanced himself from Hitler. He even considered assassinating her. Of course, it was grotesque. On October 1st, 1946, after 10 months of trial in Nuremberg, the verdict falls. Accused, Hermann Wilhelm Goering, the International Court condemns you the word by hanging. Twelve defendants are sentenced to death by hanging. Speer's strategy paid off. He was only sentenced to 20 years in prison. Goring does not want to be hanged like a simple criminal, but die like a soldier, shot by firing squad. 
The court refuses him. So, ultimate provocation, a few hours before the execution of the sentence, with the complicity of one of his American guardians, Goering procures a poison capsule and commits suicide in his cell, still convinced to leave his mark in history. He explained that now I will be condemned, but in 50 years, you'll see, we are going to have small statuettes of Hermann Goering in all German apartments. Those in charge of Auschwitz, then, are delivered to the Polish justice because the atrocities happened on its soil. Among them, Rudolf Buss, the camp director. He is judged in Warsaw and condemned for the example to be hanged in the camp at the scene of his crimes. It's scary to see the coldness of these feelings. He doesn't really express regret about these assassinations. For him, he was just following orders. These he is among them, Ruth Jones, his American a few hours before the execution of the sentence, with the complicity of one of his American guardians, Goering procures a poison capsule and commits suicide in his cell, still convinced to leave his mark in history. He explained that now I will be condemned, but in 50 years, you'll see, we are going to have small statuettes of Hermann Goering in all German apartments. Those in charge of Auschwitz, then, are delivered to the Polish justice, because the atrocities happened on its soil. Among them, Rudolf Buss, the camp director. He is judged in Warsaw and condemned for the example to be hanged in the camp at the scene of his crimes. or among them to the Polish justice, because yes. the atrocities happened on its soil. Among them, Rudolf Buss, the camp director. He is judged in Warsaw and condemned for the example to be hanged in the camp at the scene of his crimes. It's scary to see the coldness of these feelings. He doesn't really express regret about these assassinations. For him, he was just following orders. The years go by, in Hitler's close guard, only one remained alive and will become a master in the art of lying. When he comes out of Spandau prison, in the suburbs of Berlin, in 1966, Albert Speer is only 61 years old. Hitler's architect and minister attracts media from around the world. After 20 years of detention, he is the only one who can tell from the inside the functioning of power under Hitler. When Spag got out of prison, he had already signed a very lucrative contract to write his memoirs. For two years, Albert Speer has become a successful author. His memoirs, written in prison, are translated into 14 languages and have sold over a million copies. It's a star. Speer is interviewed on every television set around the world. Why did Hitler make you a friend of his? Hitler never had friends. And I said at the Nuremberg trial that if Hitler would have had friends, I was a friend of his. Maybe I fulfilled the dream of his youth. He continues to present himself as an architect who hasn't heard of the regime's worst crimes. According to his claims, he knew nothing of the extermination of the Jews. But in the 70s, Speer is gradually overtaken by revelations on his involvement in the Holocaust. In particular, we know, thanks to this photo, which he visited in 1943, Mauthausen concentration camp, where more than 200,000 people died, and that he heard Himmler talk about the extermination of the Jews. If we knew everything we know today, he would have been sentenced to death at Nuremberg. He was a very dangerous personality. Under a bourgeois mask, he had his true nature as an icy politician. Albert Speer will escape the truth until the end. Hitler's last relative, 
dies in his bed from a heart attack in 1981. Joseph Mindel, the Auschwitz doctor, nicknamed the Angel of Death, died in 1979 in Brazil without ever having been caught by justice. None of these great criminals, who worked so hard in Hitler's place, has no grave today. Their ashes were scattered, or their remains buried anonymously, to avoid any gathering of nostalgic people. Their traces are gradually disappearing. At the end of this path lost in the forest, without indication, these abandoned ruins are those of Adolf Hitler's favorite house, where all his accomplices met. Son, in the name of God, much for the old compassion to eat. Son, by the Quran of the Revenants, it is the unbeliever who has thrown the unbelievers of Jesus. How many a generation is destroyed before the Lord? We try to help. Testament to love, the war is lost.